Okay. Next on the agenda is the public hearing. Okay, uh, Madam Secretary, um, <coughs> go ahead and please uh, read the 338 into the record. Resolution number 338, a resolution to amend the Talbot County Comprehensive Water and Sewer Plan for consistency with discharge permit number 19 DP 3460 issued by the Maryland Department of the Environment on October 27, 2022 and to require that any future expansion of the new lakeside wastewater treatment plant shall require an amendment to the comprehensive water and sewer plan. Okay, thank you. Um, so, okay, at this time I'm going to open it up. Um, we will have three minutes um, for individuals and five minutes for, um, for an organization. So. I'll open it up to the public. Anybody here on, on my left want to come on up and, and speak about 338? You're welcome to come up. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yep. Come on up. Uh, Mr. President, do you want me to give a summary of the resolution and amendment? Sure. Before? Yeah, absolutely. So resolution 338 proposes to amend the comprehensive water and sewer plan for consistency with the discharge permit uh, issued by MDE for the lakeside wastewater treatment plant in October of 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, res the resolution would also require that any future expansion of the wastewater treatment plant beyond the initial 100,000 gallon per day allocation uh, under the MDE permit would require an, an amendment to the plan. Mm -hmm. And then amendment number one to the resolution clarifies that an amendment to the plan would include a certification uh, by the Planning Commission that the amendment is consistent with the county's comprehensive plan pursuant to 9506A of the Environment Article. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Good evening. I am Jim Bruce. I live in St. Michael's. I'm here today representing the Talbot Preservation Alliance, TPA. We support two proposals on, on the lakeside that are before you today, and I will mention which ones they are at the end. I think T Talbot citizens all agree that we love the quality of life here. That was no, That is no accident. As you know, 50 years ago, the county began under state law writing 10-year comprehensive plans about future growth. The county insisted that development projects be consistent with those plans. That has served us well. As for Lakeside, the procedural history of the project over the past 20 years has been complicated, to, to say the least. Yet TPA believes that the core issue in this hearing is clear. That issue is <clears throat> what kind of review develop, of the development projects should our citizens, your constituents, expect? Will the county council provide that as Lakewood moves forward? I submit that citizens expect that the Lakeside Project Review will be timely and it will capture the full impact on residents throughout the county. So it must include the projected impact of the development project on schools, on county roads, uh, and, and other items that may not be covered by the developer or by impact fees. You know, I, I would just note that schools are half the county budget. The taxpayer, I believe, does not want to wind up holding the bag in increased taxes or in diminished quality of life or of the environment. The county council and the county planning commission are responsible for that kind of review, not the town of Trent. <coughs> it's the county residents, all of us, who will shoulder the big ticket cost burden of new schools and other items such as local uh, state roads resulting from the project. On the other hand, MDE's review is of wastewater permits and other environmental issues, not the impact on the need for new schools and other big ticket items. I urge you in considering these proposals before you to focus like a laser on who will do the review going forward and when to ensure review of a development project's impact on schools, you need to review for consistency with the county's overall comprehensive plan. And that's done by the Planning Commission and the Council. MDE review 
of a wastewater treatment expansion will not do that. Currently, Lakewood can move ahead as long as the allowable 100,000 gallons per day of waste treatment is not exceeded. To exceed that, the developer and trap must come back for MDE review and get an amendment to the county and water sewer plan. But here again, MDE's review is just a technical review of the wastewater permit, not an updated look at the project's impact on big ticket items like schools. Further, based on the number of Lakewood units built so far, about 100 a year, those 1,200 units will not be built for perhaps 1,200, uh, about 12 years or more. Even then, current plans don't call for the review we seek until Lakeside runs out of S1 units and asked, comes back to convert lots from S2 to S1. At that point, there could be 1,500 units being built. In short, under current plans, updated review of Lakewood, Lakewood's impact on big ticket items like schools won't occur for about 12 to 15 years. That is longer than the length of the decade-long county comprehensive plan itself. The County Planning Commission and their Public Works Advisory Board want review earlier than that on Lakewood's impact. How do we know? Because they recommended adoption of Amendment Number 1 to Resolution 338 unanimously. That amendment provides that once Lakewood comes back for that expansion of wastewater capacity, there must be an amendment to the wastewater treatment plan, but also there must be certification by the Talbot County Planning Committee that the expansion is consistent with the Talbot County Comprehensive Plan. That would cover the impact of big ticket items like schools, county roads, and so on. This same amendment is contained in more than one proposal before you. So again, I submit that citizens expect reasonable periodic review of the Lakeside project. It must include updated review of the imp impact on schools, low, uh, state roads, traffic, is a part of determining consistency with the overall comprehensive county plan. TPA supports resolution 338 with amendment number one, and we support resolution 347 with amendment number two. Either one provides the, the kind of real review that is needed. And <clears throat> so I, we support those two provisions. I will only come before you now and mm -hmm. You know, I hope you would consider my comments for the other men. Thank you very much. Okay, th thank you. I appreciate it. Anybody over here to my left? I'd like to come on up. Hi. Hey. Um, my name is Carly Landolfi. I'm the assistant town attorney for uh, town attorney for Trap. Okay. Um, you should have received today a letter from Lindsey Ryan, the town attorney, um, reiterating okay. the town's position on Resolution 338. So I just want to say again that the town opposes this resolution and Amendment One. Mm -hmm. um, it. The, the resolution impedes the town authority to control growth within its incorporated boundaries. Mm -hmm. And um, ultimately, it treats the town of Trap differently than other municipalities who manage their own growth and planning. Okay. So the town opposes this resolution. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, anybody else on, on my left here? Uh, my name is Lisa Gezi, and I'm a resident of Talbot County. I'm, um, I live at 7218 Traveler's Rest Road. I'm sorry, I live off of Traveler's Rest Road at 7218 Maxmore Creek Drive. Please support Resolution 338, Amendment 1. This still allows for economic development and for lakeside development, but with the important guidance to, in place to ensure that Talbot County provides appropriate infrastructure in sync with development. It's not prudent to approve of homes being built well in advance of their actual build date. In fact, decades in advance of the immediate priority status allowed by the S-1 determination. Why would we write a blank check Talbot County needs to keep its eye on the best interests of all county residents, not just a few, 
by considering thoughtful policies, timing, development patterns, and land uses impacted by this development. Would we give approval for 100, 200, 500, 1,000 homes 20 to 30 years in advance to every developer? No. Talbot County needs to be thorough in its planning process and work with the developers, the county planning staff, and county residents to create the best environment for all of its inhabitants. Based on my analysis and service on the Planning Commission, Trapp's legal counsel's argument is an overused tactic and simply wrong. This attorney is a tick articulate, but is also playing the don't mess with trap card. Talbot County is not interfering in traps affairs. Thankfully, Talbot County's representatives are doing their job and playing it straight. The council's Public Works Advisory Board and Talbot County Planning Commission advisors, advisors to you, all 10 of them, voted unanimously in favor of this resolution and amendment. I ask Talbot County Council, each of you, to be mindful once again of creating the best environment for all of its citizens. Thank you. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, members of council, my name is Alan Gerard. I'm the Eastern Shore Director of the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, 114 South Washington Street in East End. We are here in support of Resolution 338 amended. Uh, this resolution requires periodic checks. And in just looking at the issues today facing Lakeside, facing this council, um, I, asking myself, even now, would periodic checks make sense, let alone in the future? So just a list of some of the issues happening right now with this project. Number one, you have the existing wastewater plan in noncompliance with its permit in five of the last 13 quarters. Number two, you have the comprehensive water and sewer plan authorizing service to approximately 84 homes, but 306 homes have been recorded, 114 have been issued building permits, and 106 are authorized to be occupied. Number three, you have MDE asking for information about the timing of development, and the Planning Commission is required to use a timing of development standard in its review Yet the developer insists its EDU phasing does not represent the timing of development. Number four, you have the town of TREP requesting for the whole project immediate priority service or service in three to five years. Yet the town's attorney says it will be at least 20 years before the whole project will be built out. Number five, you have the county engineer who just last week said that we made the mistake of calling the lower half of Lakeside S2W2. Number six, you have the Maryland Supreme Court who says that a planning commission has the right to correct errors in its decisions caused by a mistake. Number seven, you have members of the planning commission and public work advisory board finding the unambiguous purpose and intent recitation and was resolution not unambiguous at all. Number eight, you have county fiscal impacts of the project largely unaddressed. Number nine, and you've got the MDE in court because it claims without evidence that Lakeside's wastewater system will cause zero discharge of nutrients to groundwater. So that's the top nine here just to make it 10. You know, about four years ago, the Maryland Department of Environment was asked to authorize 540,000 gallons per day discharge in its permit for Lakeside. It decided to issue a permit only for the first 100,000 gallons so that it could have periodic checks on this system. <laughs> Given all the issues, all the complexity, all the community concern, Talbot County should require periodic checks too. 
We urge you to adopt Resolution 338 as amended and give the county the tools it needs to ensure that its citizens and the environment are protected. Thank you. I'm Chip Council here this evening representing the Talbot County Planning Commission and I have with me Jim Corson, a member of the Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. So we'll be pretty brief here, but I think it's important to note that the Planning Commission has spent more time on the issues surrounding Lakeside than we did on the total entire update of the 2016 Talbot County Comprehensive Plan and the following updates to Chapter 190 our zoning ordinance. The support of Resolution 338 as amended is the only issue surrounding Lakeside that the Planning Commission has been unanimous and unwavering on. So I would ask that you please take that into consideration as you do your do your deliberations. Thank okay. you. Thank you. The um, Tobey County Comprehensive Plan Vision Statement states that the primary goal of Tobey County's Comprehensive Plan is to promote a high quality of life, to preserve the rural character of our county, and to protect the health, safety, and well-being of its citizens in a resilient community. What 338 is designed to do is to make sure that all the citizens of Talbot County are protected. Um, this is not just about what TRAP wants or what TRAP needs. It's about this whole county and we represent the citizens of this county and have to do what's right. Um, there have been many letters submitted um, that have um, uh, misstatements of fact um, and of course that goes back to the the um, council hearing where 3281 was passed, where representations were made that this, that the um, lakeside was programmed when it wasn't. And a decision was made on that basis. Um, there were also representations made that, um, well, we're only going to build so many houses, but um, we're going to recount the EDUs as the plant goes along and maybe have additional development. So we're dealing with you know, um, moving the deck chairs the, on the Titanic to a certain extent. And I think that the, the county has to uh, step forward. Um, there, there were also allegations made, well, you know, the county doesn't do this with the town of Easton. Well, it does. And there were several um, uh, amendments to the comprehensive plan when Easton wanted to expand um, its, op its, its development um, and a review of its, um, storm, um, it, its plant. And it's a plant that is older than the one that is proposed for, for trap. We don't know how that's going to turn out. We have to monitor that. Um, also, the, um, the plant that's in Easton um, is um, run by um, Eastern Utilities, which has been in existence for over 100 years. And um, it has a track record of maintaining infrastructure for development. Um, I understand that the smart growth policy um, permits municipalities to um, step forward and have plans like this. Smart growth wants to preserve agricultural um, properties and focus growth where there's infrastructure. The problem with TRAP is, is the infrastructure isn't like the other uh, municipalities we have here. It's developing as this development is going on. Um, and that's a concern. And that's why we need to have a review at every stage. Um, for instance, the Police Accountability Board um, in its annual report said, the town of Trap currently has no police force and is patrolled by the sheriff's office. With the lakeside development under construction, there will be a corresponding increase in its residents. The PAB recommends that the council consider different pathways to ensure adequate law enforcement coverage for this area, including potential additional funding to the sheriff's office. It is to continue to provide protective ser if it is to continue to provide protective services to the township or to trap. So the county is already going to be called into um, subsidizing 
um, this development because the infrastructure for police department is not there. And we've been going to um, uh, fire company banquets. And in talking with fire companies, I think that the, the local fire companies did a walkthrough of um, the development in 2021. And there, there are some very serious concerns about, um, about um, providing uh, fire service um, and also emergency services. And they cite such things as the, um, the, the widths of the roads, um, the, um, the, the close proximity of the buildings um, or each of the residences, um, and some difficulties and, um, with um, building issues and um, how that could um, give way to the situation we recently had in Easton um, on Locust Street where um, fire went from one to another because they're so close together. So there's a lot going on here and it's, it's a long-term project and um, it needs to be reviewed by the Planning Commission at each step. MDE started this by saying we need to look at this at every 100,000 gallons, and we do too. And particularly if um, the developer is considering, you know, maybe expanding the number of homes because they may find out that um, you can uh, have fewer EDUs with this system. So for that reason, I think it's extremely important to the citizens of Talbot County, not just the citizens of Trap uh, alone, um, that this be monitored and um, reviewed. If everything goes according to the way TRAP wants it to and hopes that it goes, great. Then we'll get through the review. But um, we need to have that, and I think the citizens of Talbot County deserve that, and that's why I'm sponsoring 338 and the amendment. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Milkey. Um, any other discussion? Do we uh, want to go ahead and um, this eligible for vote? I no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Just, just to, uh, just to expand on on one, mm -hmm. uh, on uh, Ms. Milky's points, uh, she laid them out. Um, really, we're not looking to create uh, an undue burden on the town of Trap here. Uh, we're simply looking to uh, to echo the requirements that are already in the Maryland Department of the Environment's discharge permit. Uh, and simply uh, uh, add those to the uh, to the the uh, county water and sewer approval. It's simply borrowing that same language, that same approach that the state has already um, applied in this case, um, and it really should not be o onerous on the town of Trap. I just have a question for Brian since he's in the back of the room. You, yeah, you both can come up if you want to, but. <laughs> So in your um, DRRA, it speaks to the police chief. Can you um, talk a little bit about that, as Ms. Milky stated, in regards to the sheriff and protection and additional funding, possibly from for the county, from the county? When the uh, project first started, and Ryan may be able to correct me on a couple points here, but when the the project first started, uh, and uh, the original DRA was established um, it was established that um, Lakeside would support by supporting pay for a, uh, a, a police chief um, for I want to say it was four or five years I can't remember the exact year um, that's when we hired uh, George Ball uh, he was our police chief for more years than what the DRA required. Uh, George Ball has since moved on. We still have our, and I'm not familiar with all of the goings on with how to keep a police department specifically, but uh, my understanding is we have all that uh, paperwork uh, still uh, uh, um, together. Um, so that when we are ready, when we have enough constituents within the, the town borders, we can uh, simply go through and hire a new police chief and start our police force up again. So you have funding to hire a new police chief when the time uh, comes? Uh, when the time comes, yes, we should, yes. I mean, presently, as, as we 
aren't much, uh, the, the number of people living within the town of Trap is much higher than what it was a few years ago. Certainly the funding isn't there presently. But again, as the residents of Lakeside start to get built out and people start to move in, there will be the tax base there to help cover that. Thank you. It's my understanding that the um, first amendment to the DRRA um, provided that there is no longer going to be a contribution from the developer for the police force, that they spent close to a million dollars over the years for George Ball, but that's over and it's not their responsibility. So I just wanted to clear that for the record. Um, Correct. He, yeah, as I mentioned before a, a minute ago, that uh, yes, he, he paid for uh, the police chief uh, for a police force, if you will, uh, for many years past when he was supposed to. Um, and so I think he wanted to clarify that he's done his due diligence as far as that goes, even though Lakeside hadn't started, um, but that he went and... No, but the point I just wanted to make is that the, the DRRA uh -huh. no longer is the developer providing for funding for the police. Correct, but as I mentioned, that's, that's we still have just our, what I wanted to clear yeah, for the record. We still have our paperwork in place to start it up at any given time. Okay, all right. You can yeah, I just wanted to. Um, it's eligible for a vote. Right, and I wanted to move um, uh, the, the vote to the next meeting when we consider all three resolutions for a vote in March. All right, and you want to go ahead and hold the public hearing open? Hold it open, yes. Okay. All right, that's what we'll do then. It will go ahead and um, council will go ahead and vote on this in March when um, the Planning Commission gives their uh, um, recommendations on all three. Okay. Next resolution is um, three, 347. Resolution number 347, <coughs> a resolution to amend the Talbot County Comprehensive Border and Sewer Plan to provide the equivalent dwelling units for all phases of the lakeside development. Mr. Thomas, you want to go ahead and, and kind of brief us up on that one? Yes. If you in, would. In April of 2023, MDE re, uh, sent a letter to the county requesting that the county amend mm -hmm. the, the comprehensive water and sewer plan to provide the EDUs for all phases of the lakeside development and to address the water and sewer classifications of certain parcels whose classifications were incorrectly shown in the exhibits A and B to Resolution 281, mm -hmm. even though those, those parcels were not part of the resolution. The resolution 347 provides all phases for the lakeside development along with the EDUs for each phase. Mm -hmm. uh, the EDUs for phases two through six are all estimated and the information was provided by the town and the developer. Amendment number one to resolution 347 deletes the language. The phases represent defined land uses only and do not represent the timing or sequence of development provided however um, in both with respect to the water and, and mm -hmm. sewer future planning. Amendment number two to resolution 347 incorporates the substantive provisions of resolution 338 and amendment number one there too into resolution 347. At this time, I'll go ahead and um, open it up to the public. Hello again. Yeah. Um, as uh, stated in Lindsay Ryan's letter, the town is supportive of 347 in its original form, but opposes amendment number two um, for the same reasons that the town opposes resolution 338. Okay. Members of Council, thank you, mm -hmm. Ryan Showalter, on behalf of Trap East Holdings Business Trust. I, I've previously submitted comments to you on, on all three resolutions, mm -hmm. and I would make the same uh, comment that you just heard. I would support uh, Resolution 347 in the form or with the comments that I provided previously, mm -hmm. but object to Amendment Number 2 for the same reasons that I commented on Resolution 338 in my letter. Okay. Hello, uh, Ryan Schmidt, Trap Town Council. Um, my understanding of Resolution 347 was that MDE sent a letter last year asking the county to clarify the EDUs for Lakeside. 347 in its original draft answers that question. Subsequent amendments have only gone to politicize the original resolution. Housing EDUs of Lakeside have always been based on the county's TR zoning density. Hence, when the number of EDUs were calculated in 2003 for the 857 acre property, 2,501 was the number. And when the, P, uh, when the PUD plan was approved by the Town of Trap in 2021, there was still only 2,501 housing units. But what was confirmed in 2021 with the PUD was how exactly those EDUs were gonna be divided on the property. That's never wavered. The commercial EDUs 
which were a part of the first PUD plan, were also estimated at that time. All of this new construction will be supported by a brand new 540,000 gallon per day ENR wastewater treatment plant. I simply ask that you take the politics out of 347 and approve its original draft. Good evening. Uh, my name is Dan Watson. I'm the acting chair of the Tulb Integrity Project. Thank you for having uh, this hearing. I, I just would like to make a comment with respect to uh, Resolution 347, which is in response to MDE's request for information about the phasing of the development of travel. And we've all heard uh, a number of recitations in other meetings in which um, the town and the developer both clarified um, after answering the question about the phasing that they um, clarify that the phasing does not really have anything to do with the sequence or the timing of development, but has to do with the neighborhoods. I just want to clarify the question from MDE had to do with phasing. And in English, the word phase has to do with sequence and, or and the ordinal sequence of things. It doesn't necessarily have to do with timing, because phase two can be two days after or two decades after phase one, but it has to do with sequence. Um, the responses that are in 347, I just want to remind everybody, are responses that are, as um, Brian just said, have to do with where the EDUs are located. And indeed, the total number hasn't changed. That's not the, that's not the issue of the quarrel. <laughs> The, the point is that um, the way the developer and the uh, town wish to respond to the question about phasing is to answer the question and then say, but the word phase doesn't mean phase. And that is just one illustration of the, um, uh, of the conceptual and linguistic problems embedded in uh, this and some other uh, legislation. Thank you. Okay. At this at this time, I'll go ahead and um, keep the um, public hearing open, and um, we'll go ahead and let the uh, planning commission uh, um, decide on what, how they want to approach that um, in in March. So, moving on to the next um, resolution would be um, three forty eight. Resolution number three forty eight, a resolution regarding the Talbot County Comprehensive Water and Sewer Plan to clarify and confirm the water and sewer classifications of certain parcels incorrectly shown in exhibits A and B to resolution number 281 as amended. Mr. Thomas. Yes, this is the second of the two resolutions requested mm -hmm. by MDE last April. Uh, resolution 348 clarifies and confirms the existing mm -hmm. water and sewer classifications of those parcels mm -hmm. whose classifications were incorrectly shown in exhibits A and B to resolution 281. Mm -hmm. It includes a map as an exhibit that shows the current water and sewer classifications of all parcels in the town for, for clarity. And the map also identifies the resolutions that established all of the classifications. Mm -hmm. Amendment number one to resolution 348 clarifies and confirms the existing W2S2 status of certain parcels in the lakeside development that were established pursuant to resolution 281. Okay. All right, good. All right, so we'll go ahead and um, open the uh, Floor on 348. Ken Ryan, show Walter, on behalf of mm -hmm. Trap East Holdings Business Trust. Uh, I previously commented that we do not object to Resolution 348. And just want to state on the record, also do not object to uh, Amendment 1 to 348. Okay, that's Thank great. You. Thank you. So I'll leave I'll leave the public hearing open on 348 too, um, and we'll go ahead and um, send that um, to the Planning Commission, and hopefully the Planning Commission can come back with recommendation with those two, and that'll be in March. Um, okay. 